Okay, so I forgot to record this video in class, um, and I'm going to go through this process of doing this drunken hugging pose, or something similar to that in this video. Um, so let's start where we left off, uh, and uh, you just want to import that OBJ that you had uh, from exporting from Max. So if I ex import this OBJ, it'll make a new tool for me right here. And just like you, you exported, everything is all one object basically. Uh, but ZBrush is smart enough to know when that happens, so to put everything in different poly groups, and that lets me go down split. And I can do a group split. Uh, reason why I'm doing this group splits, I guess technically you don't have to because everything was already poly grouped. But this is more um, putting this project back in line with working within ZBrush and not uh, necessarily having a low poly mesh. Um, but this is a, regardless of how you choose to pose, um, I think posing in ZBrush is, it can be faster than say posing in Maya or Max, uh, just because you don't necessarily have to build a rig. Um, and in other video we talked about using Z-Sphere rigs, but in this one we're going to use the transpose line and just transpose master here. It's important though, uh, before you move forward, to make sure that everything is named correctly. In this case, it's, it worked out fine because it pended the numbers correctly. Um, but as I say, you, you are working in your your main ZBrush file and you have a bunch of extractions and they're kind of named the same thing. Uh, Transpose Master will fail at the end, um, so keep that in mind. You can start the process, but then it'll screw something up, right? Uh, so for this, I'm going to just basically hit uh, Z plugin, transpose master, and then T pose mesh. Basically, what that did, if you compare compare our new tools here, uh, this is the original, right? The original with all the different sub tools, and then you have this T pose three. Um, it'll always be named T pose something, and then from here, I am open to basically pose this however I want to. The primary advantage of using transpose master. Um, well, there are a couple reasons. One is that it kicks you down to the lowest subdivision level automatically, so you're not posing a multi million poly mesh. This is assuming you Z remeshed and you projected your detail. Um, you're not, you're really not going to want to do this process with a high res mesh because it would be very unfun and it would be very slow. Um, so if you look at this here, you know, everything is in different poly groups, just like before, um, based off of what is its own piece or not. And uh, I can basically use any brush to, uh, so I'm not restricted to just moving things with the um, move tool or scale rotate. Right? I can use my brush brushes to kind of adjust things as well. So this is also useful if you're doing general proportion changes and you want to change like oh, multiple parts of your model at the same time, like really make the chest bigger for some reason. Um, you can then you know, pinch down the legs if you want to make that more exaggerated. Um, oops, let's shift Z. And then uh, let's start on symmetry for now. And then, yeah, if I turn on symmetry, then I can, oops. Kind of changes these proportions, right? Uh, but I'm not here to change proportions, I'm just here to pose. So I'm going to turn off symmetry for now, and then you know I can say mask this arm. Mask the arm, invert that, and then I can rotate this out here. So let's um, make sure that I don't have anything reselected here. Uh, now I can just move my pivot point, right? hold on Alt, move this to around the shoulder area. I can rotate this, again making sure that uh, oops. just need to make sure, I'm just getting confused with my hotkeys here. Uh, and I can rotate this out. Oh wait, um, you should probably have this continue down, topology-wise. 
I think I might have missed that in the critique. But yeah, so we're not getting a super clean deformation here, but we need to, that's because we need one more edge loop there. Um, or maybe, yeah, we need one more edge loop. Uh, and then I can kind of adjust this, move it as I, I see fits. Um, I can even smooth this here. So I can move these around to kind of fix that deformation. Um, it's never going to be perfect. Uh, you're just going to have to adjust. Um, and then I can move that around. Um, there are a couple options though. Like if. Um, Alright, so I can just like mask things individually like this. With them, you mask pressure, you mask uh, marquee select. Otherwise, if I activate the move tool, um, I can click and drag along the model, and then that will kind of help me mask out certain objects. Or so I'm control clicking and dragging here. Alright, so if I go down the arm, let's say I just want to start from the elbow for this next rotation. If I just control click from the, the shoulder and kind of go down, then I can mask out basically everything but that elbow. Uh, now I just need to hold down Alt and move this in place, and then I can rotate that. And then if that's, uh, if that's too soft, then I'll just go ahead and mask everything else out. <coughs> I'm not going to be too obsessed over this because, again, this is pretty easy to fix. I can just move this out here. You know, we can continue to um, I would activate the move tool again. And then, um, let's say I just want to do the fingers, just giving it like a thumbs up. And then I'll. Uh, You know, um, if I just to center this more easily, I can hold on the Alt key and hit that Google Maps looking marker icon, and then um, I can rotate that. Make sure I have nothing else selected. And then looking at this hand again, yeah, um, I guess I missed out on a few other topology things. We should probably add one more loop, like this ends in triangle here, if you just cut that across, uh, you'll get a little bit more uh, room to deform the hand better. Um, but yeah, this kind of stuff takes a while to learn, so um, we may have to call it a day or uh, Just learn from it and apply it to the next model. So um, I know that wasn't super quick to do that thumb, but you know, conversely, if you rig it, you'd have this skin weights on it. Um, and then I'm just gonna invert this here. Oops. But this should give you a good idea or a better idea of how deformations work because I can just select. That entire area, this entire region, invert that, uh, and then see where the topology is moving as I go along. So if I'm getting unusual results, then that's usually a case of I need to adjust the geometry. Um, and I think maybe not so much in the thumb, but definitely here in the armpit. That's that's very true because there's no way I can push this in anymore because there's not that extra division. So I would do that. Um, you know, the nice thing about this too, like I say, I want to bend the entire uh, torso. It's, um, oops. I can go this way, let's uh, center all this, move this here, this reset that uh, orientation, right? I can go. Rounds. I can also hit. Um, uh, I can use move topological. Oops. 
and you know I can then adjust if I just need to move something just a tiny bit here uh, or if, if, let's say I just want to adjust the shoulder without changing the shoulder pad then yeah move topological will allow me to move that first continuous piece of geometry that it makes contact with here and then let's say um, and then the quick shortcuts too, uh, just to reiterate polygroup stuff. If I have just like a brush stuff selected and I control shift click on something that isolates it, right? And then I can click it again to hide it. Um, but if I have the move tool or to scale rotate the transform options, if I control shift click on a polygroup, then it just masks that out by itself. And then I can, you know now I can just like kind of place this the way I need to. Uh, and then we can do the same thing and say let's um, mask out the body and then let's change that back to mask pen and I can grab all of this here and say we can rotate the leg back or something and then I can take this down a little bit further um, maybe instead I, what I'll do is I'll take masking this thing here I'll grow the mask that way and then maybe I'll straighten out this oh okay let's grow it some more let's um, sharpen it so I know where I'm going and then I can yeah kind of keep going down sharpen um, Grow, sharpen, and then let's straighten out the the ankle here. And then after that, it's just adjust slight adjustment here with um, moving things around. And pretty pretty quick way of uh, just posing here. Um, in the old versions of ZBrush, uh, you didn't have this manipulator. And what we did before was we used a transpose line, which sometimes is a little bit more intuitive with uh, rigging and posing. So if you hit this, the Gizmo 3D icon, that takes you back to this Gizmo, oh, this transpose line. How this line works is that I click and drag and I draw this line. And um, these end dots are kind of where the pivot point are, right? So if I say rotate from this top part, it's pivoting from this circle. If I grab the inside circle here, then I'm pivoting from that outside circle. Right? So in, in, that's a very brief rundown of how it works. Um, the transpose line, let's say, uh, you'll notice that if I look at the transpose line again, the outer circle is the um, position of that line, and then the inner circle is how do you actually manipulate that. All right. And then this white icon, this white circle, will reset it as a straight line here. So sometimes the reason why that's preferable is again if I um, go and oh, use the transpose line, I click and draw my mask out. I can take it a little further. Let's say I want to rotate this elbow. Visually, I think it's a little easier if I just draw this line out along the that um, the forearm muscle or the forearm, and then I can just rotate it. Oops, this uh, rotate not scale or move. And then I can rotate it that way. I mean, we can take the uh, say the jaw here, or maybe I'll just invert every I'll mask everything. And then um, so one other tip is this model is symmetrical, which means even though I broke the symmetry here, uh, that symmetry is somewhere in memory, so I can go to transform or I can hit X to turn on symmetry. And then I can use posable symmetry. Okay, then we'll do that again. Now I will unhide everything. And now um, all the symmetrical areas I can mask. So if I say uh, grab the mouth here, maybe I should just have used the mask lasso instead. Let's control shift click on that so I can isolate this. So let's uh, grab the, the jaw here. The 
right? So unmask the head. I'll invert that. And then let's get rid of some of this neck area here. And then I can open the jaw that way. And I guess that's the tedious thing about doing this is um, getting all this to work, making sure I'm not selecting weird, weird things. Okay, something weird happening there, but I can just fix that later. Uh, so maybe I'll just move this down and then we can readjust the teeth here. Let's turn off symmetry because I think something's. Yeah, there we go. Something's kind of broken there. Let me open that. Um, yeah, I guess alternatively, too, I think we can also set some polygroups. So if I, I needed to, as I'm scoping, am I doing this? I think I hit Control W. If I already know that I'm going to return to this, like adjust the mouth, I just polygroup that by itself. And maybe turn on symmetry here. Um, or turn off symmetry. I think this is too far gone. Um, and then we'll control W that. And then I can grab this arm. Control W that. Um, that way we can select things a lot quicker. Right. Um, so if I needed to isolate this torso or something. During, during this process, that's pretty easy for me. Um, and if I wanted to like, just make sure that I'm selecting only part of the arm, I am free to do so. And then, maybe finally, the final little bit here. Again, feel free to take advantage of all these brushes as well that ZBrush has to help your pose. Um, I can use like the move elastic to really push like the gesture of, of what I'm doing. If I um, am concerned about much of this other stuff, then we'll um, just hide those armor pieces, and we'll we'll do it later. We'll turn it back on later, and then I can you know move. Oops, just go back here, and then I can rotate these however I need to rotate them. For rotations too on the transpose line, so the the two ends here will do the oops, the rotation from those pivot points the rotating from the center will twist it along that axis right so if I draw a line out here and I wanted to get a more even um, a more even rotation then I would or twist to it I would twist it like this here so twisting or moving your cursor along this line. You know, we can uh, even take this, rotate that, offset it, just to make sure that this doesn't look so sterile. Uh, maybe offset it a different direction. You know, maybe sometimes it's just quicker to use a move tool um, and move this around. As long as you're keeping a general volume of everything, it should be okay. Um, we can like really break this however I need to break it. And we can uh, rotate the head, have it go a different way. Let's take this arm and rotate it again. Rotate it upward and forward. But hopefully, as you see me do this too, you can you'll better understand how topology influences things. Um, how much topology you actually need in troublesome joint areas like this. Um, and that topology, if you put it in the right place, will help smooth out those uh, jagged, 
deformations. Yeah, so I'm, I'm breaking this pretty severely just so that you can adjust your low poly one more time before you take this into ZBrush to pose. Um, it might help to have the texture turned on too, and I think basically you're just going to want to import a texture. Since I don't have your texture, I'm just going to say import a texture here, and then in the texture map uh, channel here, or uh, not channel, the menu, just make sure you choose that texture and then hit texture on, and then I'll show the texture just so you know how much stretching you're getting while you're doing this. Um, and I think that covers just about it. And then once you're done, um, go ahead and go back to the plugin and then go to the tpo sub t. One final note is if you, before you had done this process of tpo's mesh, if you hit the layer button, that would have put uh, everything that pulls on this on a separate layer here. And that way you have a copy of your original in your bind pose and then the layer will have that pose too. So if I go to Z plugin T pulse sub T, then it went in and posed everything for me. Now I can you know export this as an OBJ, bring it back into Max or, or Maya, whatever you need to do. And that is the simplest way to pose in ZBrush, in my opinion.